Interesting to note too, verse 29, it mentions that no man ever hated his own body. It goes without saying that you would never intentionally hurt yourself or purposefully cause yourself injury or harm. Now you want to take care of yourself, right? Similarly, you would never, ever under any circumstances want to harm or injure Lisa, whether it's physically, with physical abuse or verbal abuse. That has no place in a marriage. And instead of maintaining your home or making it something beautiful, if you introduce that into your marriage, you're causing irreversible damage to the home that you're working so tirelessly on. So that's something you should completely avoid. Let's go back to the example of Jesus and look at a couple qualities that he has that demonstrates in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. And again, these are essential items that Jehovah's asking you to bring into your figurative home. And look at these qualities here. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. This is Jesus describing himself. It says there, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am mild-tempered and lowly in heart. And you will find refreshment for yourselves. Yes, Jehovah expects you to cultivate humility, to be mild-tempered, to be a source of refreshment for Lisa. Jesus, being perfect, still demonstrated humility. You being imperfect have even more reasons to demonstrate and cultivate humility because you are going to make mistakes, believe it or not. Yeah, but the man that you're marrying is going to make mistakes. He's not perfect. <laughs> so Denzel, it's incredibly important that you also imitate Jesus and be humble. In this aspect, when you make mistakes, make it your goal to be the first to apologize. If you notice that you made an error in judgment, admit to it and say you're sorry and mean it. You said that, or you had mentioned, that's something that you really appreciate about Lisa, is that she's very quick to say that she's sorry. And she feels it and she means it. Try to beat her to it. Try to beat her to saying sorry. And again, this um, making mistakes or, or uh, maybe hurting her feelings from time to time, it's bound to happen. You're imperfect. So make sure that you cultivate humility and say sorry. And believe me, by the end of this day, don't be surprised, even on your wedding day, if you're going to have to, at some point, apologize to Lisa for a mistake you've made. You maybe have already done so <laughs> this morning, <laughs> but it's going to happen. But remember, imitate Jesus' humility, and as a result, you're going to be a source of refreshment for Lisa. You're going to be someone that she wants to talk to, that she wants to spend time with. She's going to respect your headship if you're modest and humble rather than proud and stubborn. So those are a few essential items that you need to take care of, Denzel. Now, Lisa, what are some things that you can do to contribute to your beautiful home, to your marriage? There's decorations, arranging the furniture, the layout, maybe replacing some furniture, things like that. Things that you can especially be helpful with to really make that apartment your home. So you play a vital role in that. Similarly, in your marriage, there are important, essential things that Jehovah asks of you in order to make your marriage a happy, beautiful home. Let's look at a few of those. Let's look at Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. Ephesians 5, and we'll read verses 20 through, 20, through 24. It says there, Let wives be in subjection to their husbands, as to the Lord. Because a husband is head of his wife, just as the Christ is head of the congregation, he being a savior of his body. In fact, as the congregation is in subjection to the Christ, wives should also be to their husbands in everything. You notice what Jehovah is asking of you here, Lisa? He's asking you to be in subjection to your new head, to Denzel, to respect his headship, his taking the lead. Now, is this in some way demeaning or taking away from your personal worth, your value as an individual, as a woman? Not at all. Remember who is the originator of this arrangement. Who's giving you this gift? It's Jehovah. And remember that he knows 
what's best for your happiness. He knows what will make you the happiest, what will make the both, both of you the happiest together. So this counsel is coming from him, from someone who truly loves you and is interested in you. In fact, this role that you have in, uh, uh, in your marriage as a wife, it's really an honorable and dignified one. And Jehovah feels that way. Let's notice here Genesis 2.18 um, to note here Jehovah's thinking uh, regarding your role as a wife. Genesis 2.18 says there, Then Jehovah God said, It is not good for the man to continue to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as a complement of him. Now, you may think of a helper as an inferior position. But think about this. It's true here you're identified as a helper in your marriage. But do you know who else is identified as a helper? If we read Psalm 33, 20, Psalm 86, 17, and other verses in the Psalms, it identifies Jehovah as a helper. Further in the Bible, we read of Jesus being called a helper. The Holy Spirit is called a helper. So is this role of help, helper, an undignified position, something that lowers you as a person? Not at all. If anything, it increases your value. Notice here too, 1 Peter 3, 7. Again, we're looking at how Jehovah feels about your role as a wife. And notice what he says here in first, or what's mentioned here, 1 Peter 3, 7. And I know, Denzel, we mentioned already a few things that you need to work on or make sure that you bring to your marriage. Uh, but you'd also do well to pay close attention to what's mentioned here as well. It says there, 1 Peter 3, 7, You husbands, in the same way, continue dwelling with them according to knowledge. You notice this point here. Assign them honor as to a weaker vessel, the feminine one since they are also heirs with you of the undeserved favor of life, in order for your prayers not to be hindered. You notice there how Jehovah sees your role in the marriage as a wife? He's asking Denzel, or expecting of Denzel, to assign you honor. And 